Yes, come in. Yes, come in. Who should record this voice? The whenever anybody will come and say, automatically the voice will say, yes, come in. Okay, so what I was telling, that is, at, in William Shakespeare time, actually William Shakespeare has written 38 dramas, 154 sonnets. In most cases, especially in dramas written by William Shakespeare, women are the dominant characters. Women in many portions, the, that is like, character like Lady Macbeth, character likes Ophelia, character likes Desdemona. This is the famous character William Shakespeare has created in his dramas. Actually, where the position of women like that? Where actually the position of women was like Lady Macbeth? That means Lady Macbeth wanted to be the king and for this reason he made a plan to have the power. Virginia Woolf asked this question, that is whether, ah, nicely catch. <laughs> Virginia Woolf asked this question, that actually the position of women that we have seen in William Shakespeare's dramas, actually their position was like that. Actually, William Shakespeare wanted that the women should be in the upper position of the society. And for this reason, he wrote women he evaluated women in such a way, but the social position was like that, that Virginia was not like that, that Virginia Woolf said, that why women didn't write, that is very tough to explain. In Johnson times, in Milton's time as well, Milton was also a famous writer, and Johnson was also a famous writer of English literature. So same thing happened in the literature that the position of women were not actually praiseworthy as we have seen in the writings of John Milton, in the writings of William Shakespeare and in the writing of Johnson. Okay? But would furnish the critic a weapon which he now lacks the extraordinary, extraordinary women depends on the ordinary women. What does it mean? That means women are more men. Feminism says that all are human beings. Women have the same brain capacity and as a man have, uh, does have such kind of brain capacity. So there should not be a difference between men and women. So if women would get chance, then they can fight on the welfare, they can go to the sea journey, or they can be the head of the office. That means we have learned that Gumi Ache Shishud Pita. In the same way, the ordinary women, if they would get chance that they can do such kind of extraordinary writing like that. That is explained by Virginia Woolf in this writing that these extraordinary, or extraordinary women are in the ordinary women. It is only when we know that where the condition of the average women's life at the time, that means before 18th century, the number of her children, whether she had money of her own, another important thing, when women do, will not have her own money, they can't do anything in their own way. Actually, most of you, you have got money from your parents, isn't it? And for this reason, you can't spend your money. Suppose you are thinking that I will be purchasing a book, I will be purchasing several journals or like that. But for the cause of the problem, you can't, for the cause of the problem, monetary problem, you can't do that. In the same way, at that time, the women, they didn't have education, they didn't have opportunity to go to school, colleges and university. And at the same time, they didn't have any job, so they didn't have money of their own. And for this reason, what they will be thinking? That means, if we read much, you will get your understanding and you will also get the experience of writing something. 
one thing is that if you have first hand experience that means if we study or if you work in a company then you can write a novel or something else uh, based on the company's employees life and others isn't it that is the first hand experience another thing is that if you have education you can read so many texts so many masterpieces all over the world and you can mold your thinking that and your idea will be enriched and you will be a creative writer women at the time they didn't have job they didn't have education and didn't have money of their Oh, for the children, they put on polish their critical thinking, their writing experience. Because this is a, a process started with why women write didn't uh, before 18th century. And uh, I have said that they didn't have their own room. Own room that means every person should have his or her personal time actually this room is metaphoric over here yeah. that means if you have your own time then you can think something in your own way so that is also absent in the women life before 18th century whether she had help in bringing up her family and she she had servants they didn't have money, they didn't have job, they didn't have education, they didn't have servants as well, okay? And gradually we're getting the answer of the question, that is, whether women didn't write before 18th century. Whether the pan of the housework was her task. It is only when we can measure the way of life and the experience of life made possible to the ordinary women and that we can account for the success or failure of the extraordinary women as a writer. Okay. So these are the causes that women, they could write before 18th century if they would have education, money of their own, their own separate room, and also they would have some servant. And for if this reason, that if they would have some servant, then their servant could do many of their works. So they would have some spare time to think and write. A strange a spacious of silence seemed to separate one period of activity from another. There was Shapo. Shapo. A little group of women of all writing poetry on the Greek island 600 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And here, Martina Wolf said that actually before 600 years of Jesus Christ, a group of women, and especially one name of them, that is Shapo, this Shapo wrote some poetry, some, uh, some poems. Okay? And this Shapo and a little group of women, they tried to write something, but they fail silent. Then about the year 1000 we find a certain court lady, the lady Murasaki in Japan. She wrote a novel. But in England, what happened? In the 16th century, the Elizabethan time is exclusively masculine. In the Elizabethan period, drama had a history that is uh, classical drama started with Sophocles, Euripides, Aristophanes, and then Elizabethan drama and Elizabethan writer and the modern drama. In case of Elizabethan time, the writer basically they were wrote the writer, the male writer, they wrote novels. And for this reason, Virginia Woolf said that the Elizabethan period is totally masculine. That means in this period we have seen several dramas, but they are all written by male writer, not by... It is the condition of the birthplace of our writer Virginia. And then at the end of the 18th century and at the beginning of the 19th century we find 
women again writing. And this time in England, with extraordinary frequency and success, after 18th century, the women started writing. Not all of them were successful, but few of them were. Why? Let's check. Law and customs were largely responsible for this strange transmission from silence to speech. That means women before that they didn't write anything because they were silent. And after 18th century they started writing something because they started speaking. That is speech. So transmission from silence and why it happened? It happened for the cause of law and customs previously in the society. There were several customs. What are the customs? We see. When a woman was liable, as she was at the 15th century, to be beaten, flunk about the room, and if he, she didn't marry the man of her parents' choice. Virginia Woolf has been talking about the time in the 15th century. Okay. At the time, the women didn't have the uh, power that they will be marrying in their own choice. If any girl wouldn't marry the boy her parents choose, then the women will be beaten and also flanked. That means pre uh, crucially uh, beaten by the male counterparts. And the spiritual atmosphere was not favorable. The, and for this reason, uh, the production of the art was not favorable. And when she was, she was married without her own consent to a man who thereupon became her lord and master, whenever a girl will be marrying according to her parents' choice, then the relation between husband and wife will be the master and servant, lord and Peasant. Lord means the king and peasant means. So the attitude of the male counterpart will be dominating. That happened in 15th century. So far at least as law and custom could make him, as she was in the time of Stuart, Stuart, King Stuart of England, it is likely she had little time for writing. At the time of Stuart, women got a little time and less encouragement. Previously, no encouragement. Now, less encouragement. And the immense effect of environment and suggestion upon the mind, we are, we in our psychological age are beginning to realize. Again, with memoirs and the letters to help us, we are beginning to understand how abnormal is the effect needed to produce a work of art. And what shelter and what support the mind of the artist requires of those facts, the lives of the letters of men like Keats, Carlili, and Flavius, as she was. Actually, encouragement is also necessary. And if anything is not encouraged at the very beginning. Every writer, many of the writers, they have written many things, but all writing are not famous. Okay? That means if we think that William Shakespeare has written so many dramas, but all dramas are not successful, all dramas are not praised highly. Okay? But in the year, uh, in women's case, that incident also happened, that their writings were not encouraged at the initial stage. And actually, uh, the mind is the storehouse of knowledge. It can be said that if a writer <laughs> doesn't go to their extreme poverty, they can't write. It is just look at Kaji Nozrul Islam. Yeah? He started working as a bread shop. Eh? See, she, he went through much hardship. But we have seen other atmosphere also. Bengali poet Rabindranath Tagore, he didn't go to school. 
Rather, he studied at home and he became famous. But Tagore went to study law at England at the time. Okay, so that is, so the mind of a writer should come and cool so that he can, he or she can think in his or her own way. In case of the artist's mind, in case of the women's mind, that was not also favorable. A little bit about we have seen uh, uh, we have seen in the writings of John Keats and Carlyle and Flavio. So if you see the characters uh, uh, written by John Keats, Carlyle and Flavio, you will see that the women are not women minds and the brain are not in a positive position that they will be writing something for these regions. That means they have no education, they have no support, and they have no encouragement. Thus, it is clear that the extraordinary outburst of fiction in the beginning of the 19th century England was heralded by innumerable slight changes in law and customs and manner. So after 18th century, we have seen lots of writing came up from the women writers. And why it, is, it happened? It happened for the slightly change of law customs and manners because this law customs and manners before 18th century that were done by the male counterpart but in 19th century they were done by the male counterpart but they were a little bit changed position and for this reason they started writing right. who started writing women <laughs> women of the 19th century had some leisure previously we have learned that is yeah the everybody should have his or her own time so that he can think Previously, we have seen in the 15th century, 14th century, 13th century, the women only they did uh, the familial activities. And the familial activities, you know, if in a family there are 10, 12, and 7, 8 children, okay, it's very tough to continue the leisure time, to, to manage a leisure time. But in 19th century, the women have a leisure time. Why? What's the reason? There may be the less number of children they are coming out from the uh, female counterparts like that. They had some leisure and they had some education in 19th century. And it was no longer the exception for women of the middle and the upper classes to choose their own husband. Previously, we have learned that the women didn't have the opportunity to choose their own husband. Here, in the 19th century, they choose their own husband, an option created. And it is significant that of our four great women novelists, they are Jane Austen, Emily Bronte, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot, not one had a child. And two are unmarried. And for this reason, they got Lasers. They had education, and this is the cause that the women started writing in 19th century. Yet, though it is clear that the ban upon writing had been removed, there was still, it would seem, considerable pressure upon women to write novels. Whenever so many women writers we have got in the 19th century, other writers from other part of this world they got the inspiration, the, yeah, she can write a good novel, why I will not be writing, yeah. So from within, the women got an inspiration and the pressure that, yes, she can write, of course I will write. No four women can have more alike in genius and character man uh, this four. Jane Austen can have had nothing in common with George Eliot. George Eliot was the direct opposite of Emily Bronte and yet all were trained for the same profession all when they wrote, wrote novels. These four women writers, Jane Austen, Emily Bronte, Charlotte Bronte and George Eliot, they are not quite similar in their attitude and temperament. They are quite opposite to each other. But one thing is similar, they wrote only novels. That was the first question. Uh, second question in this essay, in this prose, that is why they wrote novels. Fiction was as fiction still is. Fiction is an imaginary writing. And you can write it in your sitting in your drawing room. What you have perceived in your 
Okay. The easiest thing for a woman to write. Okay. Poetry is very strong because within the same line, within a single line, we can express many things. Yeah. Just like Khuda Rajya Prithibi Gottamoy, Purnimar Chaljana With these two lines, the writer express, the poet express so many things. But it's very tough to find their line of this point. Okay? Drama, of course, like that. Drama, that means you have to write the dialogue done by the actor and actress of the drama. And also, you have to perform the drama. And before the performance, you have to go rehearsal some other atmosphere and drama should have should follow some strict rules and regulation. Though in classical drama they had a strict regulation. That means when the 24 hour time will be as uh, setting will be the one class, okay? One hour, that means 24 hours every incident will be happening within. So drama and poet poems, these are a little bit difficult to write. But in case of novels, that is very easy. And women took this easy. Because if women would try to write drama, they would stand. They would do. But they didn't have the opportunity like that. Because in 19th century, they have less encouragement, less education, and less leisure time. Not much leisure time, much education. Nor is it difficult to find the reason. A novel is at least concentrated from uh, of art, form of art. A novel can be taken up and put down more easily than a play or a poem. George Eliot left her work to nurse her father. Charlotte Bronte put down her pen to pick the eyes out of the potatoes. Yeah, that means she stopped doing the work and living as she did in the common sitting room surrounded by people, a woman was trained to use her mind in observation and open analysis of character. In novel, you have to analyze the character because face is the index of mind. And in novel, every details we will have. That means every incident you have to describe in prose style. Okay, not uh, not will be happening in drama and poem. She was trained to be a novelist, not to be a poet. Even in the 19th century, the woman lived almost solely in her home and her emotion. So living within her home and within her emotion. And those 19th century novels, remarkable as they were, were profoundly influenced by the fact that the women who wrote them were excluded by their six form certain kinds of experience. And that experience has a great influence upon fiction is indisruptible. The best part of Conrad's novel, for instance, would be destroyed if it had been impossible for him to be a sailor. Joseph Conrad was a sailor and in his from his own life experience, he wrote many novels and basically, uh, basically based on the sea journey. So if Joseph Ponder's sea journey, that experience was excluded from her novel, that novel would not be famous. Okay. Same thing will be happening in case of women. Take away all that tall story, tall story knew of where, actually pronunciation is new, Tolstoy knew of where as a soldier of life and society as a rich woman whose education admitted him to all sorts of experience. Tolstoy's famous writing is where and peace. Tolstoy himself was a soldier and for this reason he wrote the real practical experience of the battlefield in his fire and peace. If Tolstoy 
who don't attend the fighting or the war, he couldn't have write this novel where and peace. Most probably you have got the answer. That means why women's writing are not famous. And if it is not so, improvisation, you know, improvisation, that means create with the help of your imagination. Okay. Suppose the dialogue will not be written, that means you will be telling something from your mind. That is called improvisation. If Tolstoy wouldn't go to attend the choir, then the, his choir and piece will be an improvisation, not the real one. Again, he is Pride and Prejudice, another writer, another novel, famous novel, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, Withering Heights, Emily Bronte's Withering Heights, Vileji and Middlemarch were written by women, from whom was forcibly, forcibly withheld all experience save that which could be made in a middle class drawing room. So here in Pride and Prejudice, in Withering Heights, what we have seen, we have seen that women, they have written this novel, but here we haven't got the experience of fire. We haven't got the experience of sea journey. We have got the experience what going on in the drawing room. That means within the gamut, within the atmosphere the women writer Emily Bronte and Jane Austen brought up. So they saw the experience in their drawing room, sitting in their drawing room, that means in the family life, and they wrote it in their novel and they became famous. So we can make it turn over. So if uh, Jane Austen would attend the OER, Jane Austen could write OER and Peace. If Tolstoy, uh, sorry, uh, Emily Bronte would attend the Sea Journey, he, she could write novel like Conrad. Joseph Conrad. Okay. So the experience and education are very important for women writing they didn't have before 18th century. After 18th century, they started to write. Okay. So no first hand experience of OIR or seafaring or politics or business was possible for them. For women. No first hand experience of seafaring, that means sea journey, politics, business was not possible. Okay. Even their emotional life was strictly regulated by law and custom. Okay. Suppose in a family gathering, okay, you can't express your emotion. The boys will start dancing. Bad for the cause of the oh, you can't do it. You are a girl. You can't do it. So the emotional experience cannot be expressed in such kind of uh, position. When George Eliot ventured to lie, live with Mr. Lewis without being his wife, public opinion was scandalized. Okay. So before marriage, George Eliot started to live with a boy or a man. He slept with Mr. Lewis. Okay, so that create a scandal in the society. But if we make it opposite, that means uh, from Mr. Lewis' side, that was not scandalized. But from George Eliot's side, it was scandal. A man and a woman, they are doing the same thing. They are violating the rules of the society and the marriage system. But the women are criticized vehemently. That is the rules and customs of the society. Under its pressure, she withdrew into a suburban sec uh, seclusion which inevitably had the worst possible effect upon her work. And for, the, for this criticism, George Eliot left the place and went some other areas of the um, uh, city. And for this reason, that was a tremendous negative effect in George Eliot's writing. She wrote that unless people asked of their own accord to come to see her, she never invited them. At the time, at the same time, on the other side of the Europe, Tolstoy was living a free life as a soldier. Okay. Tolstoy chose his own life. But in case of George Eliot, George, uh, George Eliot, that means uh, he, he, she had been living, she had been living in seclusion, seclusion in solitary area. 
the she couldn't manage so many time to talk to whenever he will be talking to someone yesterday i had been talking a person he naturally uh, says bhel kuriya i asked him how, how much rent you pay a month he said 600 no no yeah per month no no per day <laughs> so that is the experience so i have got so i can write a novel or a short story based on the okay. story, I, I, incidents i had been talking with the person selling help for you he said but the women didn't have some kind of opportunity just that we have rooted in george eliot's life and also tolstoy life tolstoy himself went to the war and got the first hand experience and he wrote his famous novel where and yes. and men and women of all classes for which nobody censured him but from which his novels drew much of their astonishing depth and vigor so for the practical experience in the novels we see that are uh, from their own practical experience that novels will of course be famous but the novels of the women were not affected only by the necessarily narrow ranks of the writers experience and there is another important point the women writing are not like that they showed at least in the right uh, 19th century another characteristics which may be traced to the writers sex that means the physical the female writers emotion previously we have said that means women are not allowed in the society that they will be expressing their emotion quite good way but in case of women writer they had didn't have the experience of going to the west but they had their own experience of making physical relation to somewhere else after marriage or something else so the women novelist started writing that issue that is also important thing that this issue didn't come from the male novelist this issue came from the women novelist that means women's emotion and women's physical relation became a very important thing of the novels written by the female writers female novelists previously that was wrote by the male writers that was written by the female writers male writers but not in the exact way what women novelists did after in the 19th century in middle march and the jane eyre we are conscious not merely of the writer's character as we are conscious of the character of the charles dickens but we are conscious of the women's presence of someone resenting the treatment of her sex and pleading for its rights and this brings into women's writing an element which is entirely absent in men's <coughs> unless indeed he happens to be a working man a negro or one who for some other reason is conscious about disability it it, it introduces a distortion and is frequently the cause of weakness the desire to please some personal cause to make a character more the mouthpiece of some personal discontent and grievance always has a distressing effect as if the spot at which the reader's attention is directed were suddenly twofold in a state of single whenever a female writer will be writing about the about 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 the physical relation or the emotion especially we can say that means emotion of the male female character one time the character with the novel will be writing about his or her experience and the writer himself the female writer himself will be herself will be a part of this writing so here you will see the explanation will be twofold that means from the character side and also from the writer side but in case of the male writer that will be from single side from the male writer's point the genius of jane austen and emily bronte is never more convincing than the power to ignore such claims and solicitation and to hold on their uh, on uh, on their way unperturbed by scorn or censor 
but it is needed a very senior or a very powerful mind to resist the temptation to anger the ridicule the censor the assurance of inferiority in one from or another which was lavished upon women who practiced an art provoked provoked such a reaction naturally in our heart. so whenever women will be writing they will be criticized they will be uh, hated they will be scandalized in several ways so it is very um, tough to write keeping such kind of negative inspiration uh, for a female writer or a women writer one sees the effect of charlotte bronte's indignation in george eliot's resignation uh, resignation again and again one finds it in the work of the uh, lesser women uh, uh, writers in their choice of a subject in their natural self as unnatural self assertiveness in their unnatural dolicity uh, ductility uh, moreover in in sincerity leaks in almost unconsciously they adopt a view of difference in authority the uh, vision become too masculine or it become too feminine it loses <coughs> its perfect integrity and that with that is most essential quality as a work of an work of an art most probably so here we see that means women charlotte bronte and others naturally it's very tough for the women writer to go on in their writing because law customs social manners all are created by the society their women they had the inferiority complexity inferiority complexity you know that means what other will say oh i am writing this what the society will say what the other part of the society will say such kind of feeling will have always been in the women's writers writing that is the inferiority complexity and keeping all such kind of negative inspiration or negative uh, a negative comment we can say as well that means it was very tough for the women writer to write in the 19th century and even in, before the 18th century the great change that crept into the women's writing it would seem a change of attitude manner and the women writer is no longer bitter she is no longer angry she is no longer pleading and protesting as she writes actually someone said that yes it's better to be happy that means if we ignore many things okay if we start quarreling with somebody else you will not be happy someone said oh you are doing this not do like this so if you ignore that comment then you would be happy if you don't ignore if you start quarreling with that person then you will be unhappy in the 19th century women actually they changed uh, their attitude people from the society people from the other part of the country they are speaking many negative thing against the women but women think that no it's not right to is it's it would not be right uh, to protest their right so let them do whatever they like but what i will do that means what i can do that means women change their attitude in 19th century we are approaching and if we have not reached the time when her writing will have little or no foreign influence to disturb it foreign influence that means influence from other side she will be able to concentrate upon her vision without distraction from outside the aloofness was uh, that was once within the reach of the genius if actually suppose uh, in case of uh, cricket or football okay there is a term that is the audience sitting in the 
gallery, they will put some negative comments. Okay. If the player think that, yeah, that means their consideration will be distracted. And many of the cricket bowlers, they follow some kind of attitude. They will produce a negative sound. So the bowlers' concentration will get loose or the batter's concentration will lose and he will be out. In case of the female writers, they had such kind of distraction outside. Okay? And for this reason, they couldn't think minutely about their writing. Therefore, the average novel by a woman is found. No. Therefore, the average novel by a novel a woman is far more genuine and far more interesting today than it was a hundred of or even 50 years ago. Okay. So that was the situation women got in 19th century. Our <coughs> uh, several uh, is passage are there, most probably we can finish. Eh? <coughs> so, but still, but still, it is it's still true that before a woman can write exactly as she wishes to write, she has many difficulties to face. To begin with, there is the technical difficulty, so simple, apparently in reality so baffling that the very form of the sentence doesn't fit her. That means women couldn't write the way she wants to write. Just for this distraction we have been discussing. It is a sentence made by man and it is too loose, too heavy, too pompous for a woman's use. Yet in a novel uh, which covers so wide extents of ground an ordinary and usual type of si a sentence has to be found to carry the reader so on easily and naturally from one end to the book on the other. And this is, and this, and this a woman must make for herself, altering and adapting the current sentence until she wrote one that takes the natural shape of her thought without crashing or distorting it. That means he, she had a disturbance from outside, from the society or the manners, but women should write. Uh, keeping such kind of distraction away from his, from her mind. But that, after all, is only a means to an end, and the end is still to be reached only when a woman has the courage to surmount opposition and to determination to be true to herself. Okay, just true to herself. But that means also. Uh, Virginia Woolf gave some suggestion over here. That means women should not take such kind of destruction granted. They should write what they feel. And they should write ignoring the negative comment from the other part of the society. For a novel, after all, it is a statement about a thousand different objects. One thing is that in case of drama, in case of poetry, there are some uh, patterns, okay, romantic poetry, classical poetry, several kinds of poetry, drama, modern drama, classical drama, but in case of novel, there is uh, plenty of liberty, plenty of the uh, subject you can choose, that is the human, you can write a novel based on the human nature, and also the natural phenomena you can write, and the divine phenomena, it's many things you can write novel based on these several kinds of themes. It is an attempt to relate them to each other. In every novel of merit, these different elements are held in place by the force of the writer's 
vision. So writer, what he has, he or she has to do, she will be combining the every details. She will be linking the every details about human experience, human psychology, human's family life, human social life, and also the religious life, divine other things. That means the writer, with the help of her or his imaginative power, she or he will be linking the several incidents together, and that will be a novel. But they have another order also. This is the order imposed upon them by convention as and as men are the arbiters of the convention, they as they have established an order of values of life. That means human, they have established the values of life. And so too, since fiction is largely based on life, these values prevail there also to a very great extent. So, though novels are based on the human lives and experience, so women wrote this with much pleasure, with much uh, intrigue. It is probable, however, that both in life and in art, the values of women are not the values of a man, especially what you will see in the society, the man will see differently the values of a society. Okay, as we have seen, that is in case of George Eliot and Mr. Lewis. Lewis and Mr. Uh, George Eliot doing the same thing, but the women were not criticized negatively. Women are criticized negatively, but men are not criticized negatively. That means that values, same values will not equally be implied towards the male counterpart and female counterpart because values for a woman and values for a man are quite different. Here we see such kind of thing. And then a woman comes to write a novel and she will find that she is perpetually wishing to alter the established values. Okay. That was a taboo. That means women's physical life will not be a matter or the theme in the novel. Okay. Women writer change the values. Why not? That means male writer will be write, writing about my own life and experience. That cannot be. Women novelists changed that. They started that I will be, women writer, we will be writing about our own experience. So they change the values. That is also important about uh, this essay that is Virginia Woolf uh, has written. All for that, of course, she will be criticized for the critic of the opposite sex will be genuinely puzzled and surprised by an attempt to uh, alter the current scale of values and will see it not merely a difference of view but a view that is weak or trivial or sentimental because it differs from her own. Okay. So, but here, Two women are coming to be more independent of opinion. They are beginning to respect their own sense of values. And for this reason, the subject matter of their novels began to show certain changes. Okay? So previously, what did the male writer do? Female writer, they changed the subject matter of the novel. They were less interested, it would seem, in themselves. On the other hand, they were more interested in other women, so women writer interested to, uh, to other women. In the early 19th century, women's novels are largely autobiographical. As we have seen, that means autobiographical, they will not be put their own name in the novel. Okay, And for this reason, the character will be expressing her thought, that means the character will be the spokesman, a spokesman, you know, mouthpiece of the writer and the writer himself writing. So, in 19th century, the women novel are, be, uh, are very much autobiographical. The writer, they wrote, the female writer wrote their own experience in the novel. And one of the motives that led them to write was the desire to expose their own sufferings. Actually, their experience were not also an experience of a joyous mood. The women, they did have their life, they did have their liking and disliking. Always they are not joyous. Many times they suffered mass from the society, from the family, from the other male counterpart of the society. And for this reason, the female could write well about their mental suffering in the novel. 
before that they could not write because they, this novel were written by men. And one of the motives led them to uh, explore that and to plead their own cause. And also they can say that, yes, we had been suffering, but we are not responsible for this. We women were suffering, but we are not responsible for this. Some other person or some other sector of the society is responsible for our suffering. So this is important that the women writer could write it well in their novel. Now that this desert no, is no longer so urgent, women are beginning to explore their own sex to write of women as women have never been written of before. Uh, for, of course, until they lately, women in literature were the creation of men. So what I have seen, John Milton, William Shakespeare, others male writers, they wrote something about female character, but they were created by John Milton. So John, John Milton's female characters, William Shakespeare's female character is the creation of male counterpart. But in case of the female novelist, they are creation of the women characters by the women characters. So they are creating their own emotion, they are expressing their own emotion. That's very important. So thank you very much. We should complete, uh, uh, most probably. Be careful, man.